two-time Olivier Award winner Janie D is back in New York in the timely new play Linda. I'm here at the Dream Midtown to talk to the prolific performer about getting older, getting better, and having it all. Hello, Janie D. Hello, Ben. Mm -hmm. Lovely to meet you again. Lovely to see you. This play is so relevant, so <laughs> timely. It's been called a feisty feminist play. Mm. What was your first response to Linda? Well, my first response was when I saw this play at the Royal Court uh, last year, and I had no idea. All I knew was that my friend Noma was doing it, but my response to Noma and the play was at the end, I think I said to Rupert, can we just go home? <laughs> I so you just turned speak. to your husband and you were like, let's go Well, home. I didn't just turn. I waited for a few. We both sat quietly. It resonated so personally, but that's what, unfortunately, so many women say. It's, it's like, so it's true. my story. In Linda, you know, um, we see what, well, I don't want to say too much about it, but right. uh, we see somebody struggling with the career, mother, uh, battle, and um, try to get the balance and it is a big big job it's and your career has gotten better and better as you've gotten older you've done so many different types of parts you've been in big musicals classic works new plays mm. how do you feel about that this came to me three times I was like no I was playing Cleopatra so uh, uh, I was like no I can't I can't concentrate on doing you you know uh, they wanted me to read some of the speeches and I said, no, I can't do that. I'm doing Cleopatra. This is really, really important to me. Uh, it was at the Hollywood Bowl and then the Barbican. And uh, big deal for me. And um, then they came back and said, we don't care, just read it. And I tried and then couldn't actually get it to go. And then I said, look, obviously it's not meant to be. It's just not meant to be, you know. And then I sat down and had another think. And, you know, it went on and on and on. It wasn't a straight You board. agonized about doing this play. Yes, because of the play. And because mm. of, I actually believe it's a brilliant piece of writing and that there's a lot to be gained by seeing it. It certainly has. I mean, that's why I do want to do it. Because I so, so rarely do you feel like this is saying something that really needs to be said and in a very funny way and a very catching way. I mean, you know, there's, there's never a point where the audience knows what's going to happen That's next. True. In this play, you get to have such a delicious meltdown. <laughs> is that fun for you to do? Is it cathartic for you to do? Um, Linda is not me. And Linda is quite, she's had a really hard life. She's the power of this woman to get on top of all the things that have happened to her and you don't really know about what's happened to her until the very end and even then you might mm -hmm. not know to melt down from the place that she's got to is is a, is a challenge and it's exciting and sometimes i have fun with parts of it but it's quite a serious thing so mm. you know i i can't i can't really describe it as fun as much as I love being with the girls I'm working with mm -hmm. and the gentlemen I'm working with, they are wonderful people and I'm, I really love and have a lot of fun with them. We have to talk about what you're doing in the fall. You're yeah. doing Follies with Imelda Staunton. Yes. Tell me about that process of auditioning for it, if you had to audition for it. Was Sondheim involved? Yes, uh, I did have to audition for it. Um, and luckily, I had done a show called Putting It Together and had sung the song. So you, you, you sang the Phyllis song. Yeah, so I knew the song. But I, again, was doing Cleopatra. Everything came at once. So mm -hmm. I said, I can't read this part for you now um, because I won't do it justice, but I'll come back. But after I'd sung the song, they said, you've basically got it. So. Um, you know, I, I also, yeah, that's all you need to know. Great. You, as I mentioned, have done such a range of roles. Did you ever fear being pigeonholed at any point in your I, career? I think uh, many people have said, you know, you've got to stick to one thing because, you know, you can't do it all. And I thought, I thought that being an actor was about being able to do it all. I thought that was when I said I'd love to be an actor because I was a dancer. And then I became a singer when I lived in Rome as well because I trained there. But to be given the role of actor, to be given any role, was a treat for me. 
So at the beginning, I was playing all sorts of different things, mm -hmm. and I loved it because it was very stimulating. Um, I would not like to be typecast. Um, I think it cramps you as an actor. It means that you end up doing the same role over and over again. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I didn't become an actor to do that, although I've played women uh, with children who are having difficulty staying sane quite a lot recently, but you know. <laughs> you right. certainly have. Yeah, that's okay. And do you think Linda is inspiring audiences? Linda is an example of somebody who is sort of ruled still by an older system. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's what we're trying to look at clearly is what is the system that we all are agreeing to be part of. And Linda's trying to battle that and the new and get it right. Um, but yeah, we are looking at a bigger picture as well as the intimate picture of her life. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I certainly feel in the talkbacks I've done that um, it's hitting the right note and the I resonance so. is very felt, yeah. Definitely feels like a relevant, timely piece. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming here today, Janie. Pleasure. It was great to talk to you. Go see Linda at MTC.